Hello! In this video we're going to be looking at probabilities, events, and equally likely outcomes. Uh, this is something you typically see in the first couple of weeks of a finite class. I know it is typically done in, in week two or the beginning of week three at finite here at Indiana University in M118. This corresponds to section 2.1 in the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson. And I'm going to be looking at one of the recommended problems. And this is problem 15. It's a pretty typical problem. Um, you'll see other problems like it. it doesn't seem like it at first, but it's it's pure algebra. So uh, let's go ahead and read the problem and we'll go from there. So a die is weighted so that the outcomes 1 and 2 are equally likely. Outcome 3, or I'm sorry, outcome 1 is three times as likely as each of the outcomes 3, 4, 5, and 6, and these outcomes are equally likely. What probabilities, weights, should be assigned to the outcomes to reflect this information? So it doesn't seem like this, but this is almost purely algebra. It's not as hard as it seems at first glance. Like it seems a little crazy. There's a lot of numbers here, um, but it's not so bad. So let's go ahead and get started. And let's write down what we know first. Let's start by reading this problem line by line and kind of start figuring things out. So the first thing I want to do is, you know, I'm actually going to start from the bottom and we're going to figure out what the question is. What probabilities, weights, should be assigned to the outcomes to reflect this information. So um, I'm going to kind of cheat and uh, we're going to start, it's, it's not really a cheat, but I like to always kind of define where things are coming from. So I'm going to make a big box so we know that these aren't really numbers that we care about. That's probably too big, but we'll see. One, two, so if this is, if this is dice, there's going to be three sides, right? Oh, it, it's perfect. And so what we're looking at is the probability or outcome of 1, the outcome of 2, the outcome of 3, the outcome of 4, the outcome of 5, and the outcome of 6. So these are our, uh, our f six different things that we're trying to figure out here. And uh, it seems a little crazy. It's not so bad. So let's get started. So now we're going to go back up to the top. And we know that outcomes 1 and 2 are equally likely. So O1 is equally likely as O2. So that means outcome 1 and outcome 2 are equal. Outcome 1 is three times as likely as each of the outcomes, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And these outcomes are all equally likely. So first of all, Outcome one, and I, I'm going to kind of cheat here and not and not write them all down. Outcome one is three times as likely as outcome three, which is uh, outcome three is equal to outcome four. Whoa, got a little malformed there, which is equal to outcome five, which is equal to outcome six. And uh, there's one more piece of information that we know that they don't explicitly give us because they expect us to know, and that is outcome 1 plus outcome 2 plus outcome 3 plus outcome 4 a little too wide outcome 5 plus outcome 6 you know all these things added together well they're probabilities so they have to be equal to 1 and we know that they don't have to tell us that we should just kinda understand that and, and if you don't get that um, I did another video check it out or do a little bit more you know digging in this chapter because that's a really really important thing to be comfortable with um, knowing that probabilities always have to equal once so where are we gonna go from here let's let's check out some of the stuff that we know so again I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda use some colors because I hate using all these O's because it's really easy to get confused so I'm just gonna kinda you know write over them you know I'm gonna call one n so anywhere I see a 1 I'm gonna put an n I'm gonna call 2 O2 2, M so anywhere I see an O2 I'm gonna put an M I'm gonna call O3 I'm gonna call that L try to make sure that you can see that's an L L and O4 well I'm gonna skip over O so we're gonna go to P so P Q and R and uh, this is just, you know, so I don't get confused. Because I find it really easy to get confused with all these O's. You know, if you mess up one of the little numbers below, you're going to end up pretty bad. So this e means that N equals M. So we can cheat, right? You know, we're going to come back down here. And we're going to say plus, 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 
plus equals 1. So we still know that. And since we know, you know, right here that n equals m, well, we can come down here and we can get rid of one of these. And that's that's your always your goal here is to um, get rid of some stuff, you know. If you can get rid of all these extra things, it's going to make this problem much, 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 much easier. So, you know, we're going to have n plus n because m is equal to n. So this this just makes it easier. And then let's look at, at this up here. And I'm going to try to scroll up so you can see it. Let's look at, uh, I'm going to circle it in yellow so you can definitely see it because it's really important to kind of get comfortable with. I'm going to circle it in some color. So this bit right here, L is equal to Pu, <laughs> L is equal to P, which is equal to Q, which is equal to R. So uh, again, we're going to go back to our blue. And so we're going to change all these L, P, Q, R, we're going to change all of these to L's. And again, the more, and you wouldn't have to do all of this. Um, when I first did the problem, I kind of cheated on my own, but as long as you're still kind of figuring it out, don't be afraid to just really break it down and make it as simple as possible. So now we've got n plus n e plus l plus l plus l plus l equals 1. And so, you know, that kind of starts us out, but, you know, it's not all of it. So now we're going to look at this one right here. So n equals 3l, right? Because, you know, it was 3o, so it's 3l now. So n equals 3l. And uh, so uh, let's go ahead and we're going to switch out for all the n's down here. We're going to switch 3l plus 3L plus L plus L plus L plus I think there's just one more L L equals 1 okay so now this is algebra you know there's only one variable and that's that's what you want to see so 3 plus 3 3L plus 3L is 6L plus L plus L plus L plus L is 4L and this equals 1 so 6L plus 4L, that's 10L equals 1. And that means L equals 1. Okay, 1 tenth, sorry, herf or derf. Okay, so L equals 1 tenth. So what was L? That was 03, that was 1 tenth. And since L equals P, that's 1 tenth. And since P equals Q, that's 1 tenth. And since R equals all of these, you know, that's 1 tenth. Okay, so... Uh, we just figured out part of the problem, and, and I don't know, you know, this is not a, a small deal. We, we just figured out, you know, what the outcome probabilities are of 3, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, and 0, 06. That's pretty handy. So what else do we have? Well, we know that this L right here is also equal to 1 tenth. And so uh, I'm going to kind of bring this out. So I just want to make sure you can see it. Uh, N equals... 3L. Well, 3L equals 1 tenth, so that means N equals 3 times 1 tenth, and that means N equals, I'm just going to, 3 tenths, and since we see up here that N is uh, 0, 1, or I'm sorry, the outcome of 1 and the outcome of 2, that means that uh, this, and I'm getting real messy here, but hopefully you can see it is 3 tenths, and this is three tenths. And so let's draw another chart because when they're when they're asking questions like this on the on the test, they're gonna expect to see it in a nice easy fashion. So you know we're gonna have two sections. And so this is the number and this is the outcome. So one has an outcome of th three tenths. Two has an outcome of three tenths. 3, 4, 5, and 6 all have an outcome of 1 tenth. And uh, that's what they were asking for. What are the outcome probabilities for each of these numbers to show up on a weighted die? And that's it. That is all of it. So these problems, when you look at them, you know, there's a lot of numbers going on. I know they're calling it finite, but really what it is is a bunch of algebra. They're word problems. You just have to figure out, you know, what exactly are they telling you? And you have to remember that when you add all your probabilities up, and we could, we could test this right down here by you know adding all these together. And um, I wanted to make that a different color. Uh, adding all these together, and they should equal one.
And, you know, if you look at it and you try that, they do. And so anytime you get a bunch of probabilities and you need to figure them out, try to keep it organized, break it down, and then, you know, add them all together. And if they don't equal one, you've done something wrong. So just check it out. Try a couple of practice problems. And I don't think it's going to be too hard for you. I don't know why they call it finite, because this is a tricky one. This is algebra, and you can do this.